Let's go parametric. I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales. This video is sponsored by Thangs. To start off with, let's take a look at the end result. This here is a purely parametric model, which means everything that's driving this is an equation, so to speak, or a reference to this spreadsheet right here. Now this spreadsheet controls everything. I can change it and it's going to change the model itself. It's incredibly powerful stuff. You might also notice that the whole itself doesn't actually have a dimension in the spreadsheet, it has a percentage ratio. This is the idea of sort of linking features together that should always be linked together in some particular way instead of using a dimension to drive it. This affords us some incredible flexibility down the line if we wanted to do some very large changes like making this only 10 millimeters in size. The whole size doesn't matter because it's driven by a percentage ratio. All this and a lot more we're going to be covering in this video. So now let's go and dive straight into parametric modeling in FreeCAD. Getting right into it, let's open up our pure direct modeling save that we created in the last video. If you don't have this for whatever reason, I have a backup of it down in the description or by all means, go ahead and recreate it. I'm going to go file, save as, I'm going to save this as going parametric. With your file now saved, let's introduce a new workbench, which is going to be the spreadsheet workbench. Click this, not much will change, but the tools do, because we want this right here, the ability to create a new spreadsheet. This creates a spreadsheet that you can double click and it opens up a spreadsheet. Many people like to rename this right now, but in all honesty, because we only have one, I think it's pretty self-explanatory to call it spreadsheet. You can call this dimensions or whatever you want, but I'm gonna keep it at spreadsheet. Down in the description, I have all of this for you to copy and paste it in. And now let's go over what exactly is happening here. Obviously we have a name right here and we have a dimension or a number of some sort. These numbers aren't intrinsically special right this minute because we haven't set a variable or an alias or a name to them right this minute. It comes to a little bit of a weird thing within FreeCAD that right this minute there's no sort of automatic way of doing this so we have to do this manually. So we have the name right next to it so I'm going to go copy it. I'm going to go over to the number, right click it and go alias. Here I'll be able to paste in the alias. I'll also be able to go to the display unit and set this to millimeters. Another way of doing this is we'll copy the name again. I'll click here and then we have this little tag because we're going to basically tag this with the alias and whatever units we want set to it. Now the personally, the way that I like to use it is the shortcut of control shift A and that gives me a nice quick way to just go from one to another, just quickly copying this, going control shift A and pasting it in and going along. Now do that for all of them and don't worry about the percentage ratio. You don't need to put in percent because it won't accept a percent here. You just leave that blank and we'll do that for the other two as well. With this now done, let's quickly put in a save with control S. And now let's head back to our old view. You'll see down here it says spreadsheet and going parametric. All you have to do is click going parametric and we go back to our 3D view. Let's just quickly change this back to part design. And I just want to mention one quick thing. Parametric modeling is very personal and there's 101 different ways of how to set up a model to be parametric. The way that I set a model up to be parametric might be completely different to the way that you would set up a model to be parametric. By using different types of formulas and equations, we can get completely different results. And that is the power of parametric modeling. You can go and set up a model however you want to, to make it as unique as your style of modeling. So with that all said, the key defining feature that I want driving my entire parametric model here is the base sketch itself and that one dimension of height, width, depth that I've put in to the spreadsheet right here. So let's go and do that. Let's go to the box in the box body, the box base pad, and the box base sketch. Open this up and I'm gonna go super slow here. We're gonna double click our 70 here to open up this insert length. We're used to this. And this right this minute is considered something called a magic number. It's a number that's sort of deep down in a sketch somewhere and it's really not the best, most accessible place. And that's the whole point of parametric modeling is making every dimension as accessible or as flexible as possible. And the key thing that we're looking for here is that little button right there. Let me zoom in. 
you might recognize this from places like Excel. This is your formula input, also known as an expression editor. To open this up, you can either click right here or press the equals button and that will open up the expression editor. Now, do not get confused or scared of this whole idea of expressions and formulas. The key rule of parametric modeling is to keep it as simple as possible. And if it's not simple, you're going wrong somewhere and you need to simplify it down by breaking it down into smaller components. So we've got a spreadsheet that holds all this stuff. Let's tell it, look at the spreadsheet. Type in spreadsheet, there's two here. Doesn't really matter which one. We'll click one and okay, nothing's come up. That's because we're just telling it to look at the spreadsheet, not look inside. To look inside of something, you've got to add a dot. This is called the syntax of the expression. So that dot says look inside. You can see there's many ways of looking inside, but you'll see right here, it starts to bring in all those aliases, those tags, those variables that we've set to those numbers. And height, width, depth is the one we're looking for. And the sum of the equation or the formula that we create up here appears down here, which is 70, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we'll click OK. Now we have this option to put in a name. And this is quite fundamentally important now because it makes it available for other expressions later on. And I want to use this later on. So I'm going to put in box width depth because this is obviously just the box width and depth. I'll click OK. And our lovely sketch now goes green because it's all constrained and it goes orange here. This orange means that it is an equation driven sort of constraint. That's just letting you know, hey, I'm driven by a formula, not a reference. So now we've taken a look at how this applies to a sketch and how to put in a formula. Now this is the cool thing. This applies to everything. Even our box space pad, when we open this up, Right here, you will see in the input field comes that little F again. And you've guessed it. When we click this up, we get our formula editor. And I'm just going to go for the exact same one once again, our spreadsheet dot height width depth. And by all means, you can split this up into three different dimensions. I'm just putting height width depth for the speed of this video. We'll click OK. And that's it now done. It's put in 70 and we'll click OK. Right, so now I think you have the basics covered. Let's just speed this up just a little bit more and do something just a little bit more complicated. We're going to go to the box hole because this one obviously has a dimension as well that we have to turn parametric. I'll double click it. We'll go into the equal here. And this one's a little bit different because I do not want to refer to the spreadsheet. I want to refer to something that is always going to be there when it comes to this internal dimension. Now, what would that be? That would be the external dimension of the box, obviously. And we gave that a name. How would we get to that? Well, instead of referring to the spreadsheet, we're going to refer to the box base sketch here. Again, to look inside of it, we'll press a dot. But there's no name in here. Well, what exactly did we name? We named a constraint. So look inside of the box base sketch and look at the constraints in there. Okay, it's looking at the constraints and now look for the name box base width. Perfect. Now this is 70, so that's not exactly what we're looking for. Now we can go and refer to the spreadsheet. We're gonna minus the wall thickness. So that is the spreadsheet dot wall thickness. Now that's still not the right dimension though, because that's just considering one wall. So we need to times this by two, and that will give us both of the walls because we're talking about both the top and the bottom wall here. And that there is pretty much it. We'll click OK, and we'll put in the name here, box internal, because I do want to refer this in the future. We'll click OK, and that's this sketch now made parametric. Now we'll go and click close here and deal with this pocket. So we'll double click into the pocket. We'll go to this 67 here. We'll open up the formula, zoom in once again. And what would this one be? This one's going to be, well, we have our spreadsheet dot height width depth, but we do also have a minus spreadsheet dot box base thickness. And that's pretty much it. We'll click OK, go back, 
and that will be the entire box now made parametric. As you know, Fangs is a community for 3D enthusiasts from designers to engineers where you can select and download from over 3.4 million free models. Plus, when you upload a model onto Thangs, they are automatically converted into augmented reality and they accept over 20 different file formats, including large assemblies with over 500,000 facets. So be sure to check Thangs out through the link in the description. By using that link, you're not only just checking out the fastest growing 3D community, but you're also helping me make more videos like this. And for that, thank you. Right, now let's deal with the lid. We're gonna kick it up a gear as well, just a little bit and go a little bit faster, but I would really encourage you to just give it a go because I'm sure you can figure it out. We're gonna go to the lid base and I don't want to refer to the spreadsheet here. What I wanna to refer to is another feature that it's always going to be linked to and that is the box base itself. So you've guessed it, it's the box base, the constraint that we've named box width depth. And that's exactly it. We'll click OK. Don't need to give it a name because I don't think I'm going to refer this in the future. And I'll click Close. Then we have this lid base pad. Now we don't have anything that's a three in our spreadsheet, but we do have a spreadsheet dot lid thickness. And we know that the lid is always going to be two levels. So let's divide that by two. But technically speaking, what I've done right here is super bad practice because I've just put a magic number deep inside of a formula and that's really a pain to get to in the future. The best way to deal with this or the best practice would be to create yet another alias, for instance, lid layers and set that to two. So then we can change that in the future. But considering that I know my design and I'm always gonna stick to two, I'm just gonna leave that with two, click okay, click okay and that's it done. Now let's deal with our lid lip. It's very similar to many that we've done before now. We're looking for something that is the internal dimension because obviously this is the internal lip. So what would that be? Well, we've got the box hole and the box hole has a constraint that has the name box internal. Brilliant. Now we have a little offset here, don't we, for our 3D printer. So I'm gonna minus the spreadsheet dot print offset, but that only gives me one side. So let's make that two sided by timesing that by two and click OK. And that's that in place. I don't need to give it a name because I'm not going to refer it in the future and I'll click close. Now we have the pad once again. This one's a nice simple one. We know it because we've pretty much just done the exact same thing. So it's the lid thickness divided by two and click OK and OK. Now let's take a look at our lid hole here. We're gonna go in here and you might think that this is quite complicated, but it isn't really. Because we don't really have a number and we're doing this purely through an expression, I'm wanting to link this to the internal dimension of this lid. Well, we have that. We have the box hole dot constraint dot box internal. Brilliant. And I'm gonna times that by the spreadsheet dot lid hole percent ratio, which is whatever 30% of that internal is, is set right here. So it's 20.1 and we'll click OK. And that is now locked in place. No name again, we'll click OK. And lastly, we need to deal with this pocket, do we? This is already referencing to the face. I'm fine with that. That face should always be there because this is a lid. If not, it wouldn't be a lid. Now, many people would say, just go for through wall because then no matter what, it's going to be stable and you'll know that it's gonna cut through it. But in reality, we know our design and depending on your design, you don't have to change that. Now let's deal with the lid chamfer. Again, right here, every single input has this formula. It's beautiful. And I'm gonna put in spreadsheet.globalchamfer, click okay, click okay once again, and that's it. Now our entire model is parametric. Give it a quick save with Control S and you might be wondering, okay, but now how do I get that cool way that you have those two windows open? That's really simple. Just make sure that you have your going parametric selected and you're not inside of your spreadsheets. All you do is go to Windows, Tile, and that's it done. You can then move this along in this direction and then make this go all the way this way and start playing around with these dimensions as much as you want. You really can go crazy here. 
that's now the full capability of parametric modeling. Well, it's in your hands. You can do whatever you want. Now you might be wondering, how do I get this back to full screen? Just double click it, that makes it full screen, and that's it, done. And there you have it. You now have a foundational understanding of parametric modeling in FreeCAD. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome, and it's the reason why I've been able to make this entire series of video completely for free. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here, and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord community, and that's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.